there were some levels in Populous that could have been so much better. Here are the top 5 worst single player levels in Populous The Beginning. The most important factor that makes Populous a unique gaming experience is the awesome elements that the Shaman introduces. Imagine you've just conquered a treacherous planet where all three opposing tribes united against you and you're currently running on a Populous high. Excitedly, you jump straight into the next level to see what's in store, when suddenly, control of your shaman is taken away from you and you're locked in some sort of prison. A prison that looks a lot like a leftover dungeon keeper asset. Incarcerated does just that. A different populous experience for sure, but one that doesn't result in a fun, well-made level. The Chimara begins on their own fortress looking island, whilst your braves are on a small hilly island off the Chimara's coast. You're tasked with creating an army that needs to cross the ocean to free your shaman, but hurry, for there is a timer, and to accomplish this task you will want to use boats. There are some serious pathfinding issues though, and you have to use boats. The AI shaman is also unresponsive to your assault, and you're required to use boats. A combination of bugs, boats, lackluster AI, ships, a timer that emphasises these latter reasons, and those wooden objects that float across the sea, are the reasons why this level makes the list. That's the sound that the inhabitants on this level make, and the sound you too will make when playing Inferno. Unfortunately, most levels on this list are towards the back end of the campaign. It's almost as if Bullfrog ran out of ideas and just slapped the tribes down and called it a day. Without pre-built bases, the Matak and the Dakini don't pose much of a threat for some time, and the Chimara start on their own private island. For the most part, the Chimara will only attack you, while Steelers will scrap with each other occasionally. The Dakini will try to worship the Firestorm Stonehead, a completely pointless Stonehead at this stage in the campaign. A missed opportunity to reintroduce the Bloodless spell in the campaign, in my opinion. A very unattractive and off-putting texture, poorly scripted AI and lack of creativity makes Inferno a dull experience for one of the final levels in the campaign. I can't really put my finger on it, but something about this level has never sat right with me. Headhunter is a large level, each tribe is in a unique position, and the Dakini are, as they commonly are, an absolute powerhouse. There are stone heads, yes that's plural, stone heads containing volcanoes situated in the bases of your enemies, and there is another stone head containing the Armageddon guest spell. The Dakini will attempt to retrieve the spell and cast it, hoping to ensure them a fast victory, as they begin the level with over 100 men. However, as the player you don't realise this, and that's the reason that I believe ultimately ruins the level. Fog of War. You only come across fog twice in this campaign, having witnessed it on level 9, Fire in the Mist. It worked great there, there was one enemy, it was fairly linear, and there were hidden secrets to discover. On Headhunter, you suffer because, for the majority of the game, you have no idea what's going on. You miss out on how your enemies construct their bases, how they attack one another, and what strategies they try to adopt. Combining this with a poor starting location that hinders progression, this level feels like a chore to play. It is a shame, because the AI is actually quite smart for a change, which does result in a noticeable difficulty spike. If only the following levels followed suit in their difficulty, then the random spike could be forgiven. Headhunter, poor level. Remove the fog, I doubt it would make this list. I like to say this a lot about populous levels, so I'll say it again. Great idea, poor execution. Unseen Enemy is an easily forgettable level and one which feels like a bump in an exciting road being between two of the best levels in the campaign. The idea is great, 
Reincarnation sites are away from the mainland, emphasizing the importance of your shaman staying alive, and you have to construct your settlement with the aid of towers. The problem lies with the slow AI and the positioning of the invisibility vault of knowledge. That's right, the Chumara will use invisibility to attack your tribe, but if you'd like to use a spell yourself, you will need to wait until the next level. If and when you manage to reach the vault, you will already have crushed the Chumara, making it relatively pointless to steal from. The Chumara also build so slow, and they only use about one quarter of their island. You can just build all over your own island and defeat them by pure numbers alone. Oh yeah, there isn't a road, Stonehead. Unseen enemy. Make the AI faster, smarter, and place the vault where the stone head is, guarded by invisible men. I should work for Bullfrog. I want you to put aside your nostalgia for a moment, forget the fact that you are a god, and have a long, hard think about the beginning. I appreciate that this could be a level to show off your powers as a god, maybe it was just a fun level thrown in for you to enjoy yourself, but even that could have been done so much better. If that were the intent, why not just give the player a truck ton of mana and spells and just let you go to town on the enemies in your own spectacular fashion? For me, this level should have been one last stand from the opposing tribes, where they come together to try wipe out the blue tribe for good. What we get is a terrible plain looking planet, with a gross texture, where tribes would attack one another, rather than concentrating on the tribe with a god killing their followers with spells from the skies. I would have liked a back against the wall level, where tribes are allied, where they attack you by land, by air, and by water, where all three guest spells return and each tribe attempts to worship them throughout, keeping you on your toes at all times even if you are a god. Were the Armageddon spell to be cast, you would be as good as dead. A level that would have creative design, a level where you would feel accomplished upon overcoming the odds, a level that would showcase everything populous to the beginning. If only. Thank you again to Andronic for putting this video together and capturing all the footage. If you've got any ideas about what you'd like to see in future top 5 countdown, let me know. I'm thinking for the next ones we can do maybe some top 5, maybe top 3, because the campaign is short of Undiscovered Worlds. So let me know what you think about that, and other ideas for maybe the beginning map pack, or maybe some user-made campaigns. That could be good as well. Let me know in the comments below, and if you've enjoyed the video, like it and all that stuff, and I'll see you all later, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves.